In October 1977, the Space Shuttle Orbiter Enterprise successfully completed a series of tests which proved its ability to fly through Earth's atmosphere to a controlled landing. Beginning in 1980, an unpowered landing on Earth will be the conclusion of a routine space mission for an operational space shuttle. Space shuttles are reusable cargo carrying vehicles which can deliver up to 65,000 pounds into low Earth orbit. Shuttle missions will begin from either of two launch sites, at Kennedy Space Center in Florida or Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Three main orbiter engines and two solid rocket boosters furnish power for the ascent phase. At an altitude of about 28 miles, the solid rockets are jettisoned. They parachute to a landing in the ocean and are recovered for reuse. Shortly before injection into Earth orbit, the external propellant tank is separated to impact in a predetermined remote ocean area. Orbiters will operate at altitudes between 100 and 600 miles for periods of up to 30 days. A standard sea level atmosphere and a shirt sleeve environment are provided for the men and women crew members as well as the accompanying non-astronaut scientists and technicians who will occupy living quarters on the lower deck. Once in orbit, an orbiter's cargo bay doors will open, readying the contents of the 15-foot diameter by 60-foot length cargo bay for operations. On a delivery flight, the mission and payload specialists can check out each satellite and propulsive stage before release using instruments on board each orbiter. Then they can use the orbiter's remote manipulator arm or an alternate ejection device to lift the satellite out of the cargo bay, place it clear of the orbiter, and perform any final checkout operations. Satellites which are to operate in high altitude orbits will use attached propulsive stages after being delivered to a low altitude by a shuttle. The huge orbiter cargo bay will accommodate multiple payloads, which will increase cargo carrying efficiency and enable users to share the cost of space transportation. Here, an orbiter carries a meteorological satellite and two Department of Defense Navstar satellites for its worldwide navigation network. Additional cost savings can be realized by new payload designs, optimized to match the cargo bay's large diameter Shuttles will also fly missions in which orbiters, with space laboratories installed in their cargo bays, operate in orbit from a few days up to a month. These space labs, under development by the European Space Agency, will provide reusable, multipurpose facilities which will support the requirements of many different missions. Shuttles will allow delivery into space of such valuable scientific instruments as the Space Telescope, which will give astronomers an undistorted view of the universe many times better than the largest ground-based telescope. The shuttle provides a unique capability, on-orbit servicing, using an orbiter's remote manipulator system or astronaut extravehicular activity. Modularized satellites, such as this Earth Resources Observatory, can be serviced in an orbiter's cargo bay using an exchange mechanism with a remote-controlled rotary magazine which carries replacement parts. Orbiters also will have the capability to recover satellites for return to Earth. On completion of mission operations, the orbiter is oriented to a tail-first position 
and its small engines are fired to reduce its velocity to less than orbital speed. Then, the orbiter is reoriented nose forward in the proper attitude for entry into Earth's atmosphere. A new passive reusable thermal control system protects the vehicle and its contents from the heat caused by atmospheric friction. After descent into Earth's atmosphere, the orbiter uses its airplane-like aerodynamic surfaces for flight control, makes an unpowered approach, and touches down on a 15,000-foot runway. Within two weeks, an orbiter can be serviced and readied for another routine flight. This rapid turnaround will allow 60 shuttle flights a year with a fleet of only five orbiters, a reusable space transportation system which will eliminate the need for a score of different expendable boosters and the production of hundreds of units. The possibilities and potential benefits of space operations challenge the imagination. Space industrialization is viewed as a logical step following the achievement of routine weekly shuttle flights to Earth orbit. This new step will require the assembly of large structures in space, giant antennas to provide low-cost personal communication service for millions of people, and a permanent space base where many vital tasks can be performed, such as zero-gravity manufacturing, Earth resources management, medical care, weather and environment monitoring, and construction of vast arrays of solar power converters to provide energy for use on Earth. Yet those possibilities represent barely the beginning of our working presence in space, a presence which will be made possible by Space Shuttle, America's space transportation system.